Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft! I'm alive and I'm happy to be back. I told myself I was never going to apologize for being away from the channel for a little while because as a viewer when I see other creators do that, it makes me feel bad for them. I feel like they feel obligated to give me content when I'm just happy to see whatever they upload. So I didn't want to find myself falling into that trap. With that said, I was away from the channel for a little longer than I wanted to be. I got sick with the flu for a couple weeks and I just had so much crafting energy build up while I couldn't get out of bed that when I finally did get back to the table, I just jumped into something huge bigger than I've never built before and I it took me much longer than I anticipated and all of the extra kind of steps that come with filming it uh, added kind of quite a bit of bulk and I didn't want to rush any parts of the process I figured it was better to do it right than to try and rush it to get it up uh, to appease the algorithm so hopefully you uh, have waited patiently and you're ready to see something cool because I've got a big boy build ready to show you and I'm pretty excited so like I said, this build is quite large, so I think I'm going to have to split it into three chunks. I haven't started the editing process yet, um, so I can't be certain, but I think that that seems reasonable. I don't expect anyone to sit there and watch a feature length film worth of me cutting foam. but. Uh, three digestible chunks, I think, can, can split this up into something that's much more manageable. So before we jump right into the build, I just want to talk about the theory real quick. Because I want to build buildings, but I don't have a ton of storage space, so I tend not to do that. But I do love the idea of modular buildings that can come apart with playable interiors. Well, I see a lot of people making uh, taverns and blacksmiths and other town buildings uh, which look amazing and they turn out awesome and I get very jealous of them. Uh, my rational brain can't bring myself to make them because in my campaign I only put terrain down on the table when there's combat and we have miniatures to keep track of and all of kind of the nuts and bolts that come along with that. And uh, I don't usually have combat break out in towns and taverns and blacksmiths. Uh, so while they look amazing, uh, I find that those encounters on my table just kind of get theater of the mind uh, role played. And, and those buildings wouldn't get a whole lot of use for me. Uh, so I was thinking a lot about what would get a lot of use for me because then I can justify actually making it. And I've decided on a tower. And not just any kind of Pringles can dice rolling tower. I'm talking a big multi-level fully functioning playable interior tower. So I've never built anything quite like this before, uh, so I have no idea how it's gonna turn out, but I'm really excited to do the build and let's just jump right into it. So to start out this build, I'm gonna draw some 10 inch diameter circles on some half inch thick blue polystyrene. To get a rough circle, I'm just wrapping uh, my pencil in string and using that to get a super rough, not even worth it circle. So I decided just to trace a dinner plate. This was way better. I'm gonna do that four more times because I want my tower to have five stories. Once I have those drawn, I'm gonna very carefully freehand these on my Proxon because I don't have a jig or a thumbtack laying around. You could do this with a knife, but just be careful to get a 90 degree cut because we're gonna be gluing walls to these later and you don't want those at any kind of weird angles. So the 90 degree angle is really important here. Once all my floors are cut out, I'm gonna draw a one inch grid on them. To do this, I'm just finding the center point and then using a right angle ruler to draw dots out from there, making sure everything is at a perfect 90 degrees so that I don't have any crooked lines. Then I just dot it out with a Sharpie and connect the dots with a ruler. When that's done, I'm gonna take out my X-Acto knife and cut out the Sharpie lines at a 45 degree angle. This is gonna give a really defined beveled grid, which looks a lot more intentional than the regular grids I would put on something like a cave floor. I like this tiled look a lot for a building interior. Now for my soapbox Lisa Simpson moment. You don't need to change your blade as much as you think you do. I completed this entire build using one X-Acto blade. I didn't change it and it's still on my X-Acto knife. It doesn't pull and it's not wasted. This is because of this tool right here, my Kershaw knife sharpener. You spray it with a little WD-40 and then you run both sides of your dull blade along it and it will cut like a fresh blade again. It's something like 20 bucks on Amazon and it will save you buying hundreds of blades. I've had this thing for four years and I don't regret it one bit. I'll throw an affiliate link down to it and other products that I like to use in the description of this video. So once you're done cutting, your floors should look like this. 
and now I'm gonna texture them with a tinfoil ball. Because I didn't really have a plan going into this, I spent some time thinking about how tall I want this thing to be, as I always value playability over everything else. I wanted to be able to fit my terrain and minis inside of it while it was together, but I didn't want the walls to be too tall to see over when it's sitting on the table. I decided that for now they'd be a max three and a half inches tall, and I could always cut them down later if I felt like it was too excessive. So I'm gonna mark out a bunch of 3.5 inch pillars on what's left of my half inch foam. These are going to be wooden pillars on the interior to add a bit of structure to this thing. I'm just gonna cut them all out with a utility knife. When they're all cut out, I'm gonna bevel the corners with my X-Acto knife and then use a wire brush to add some wood grain to all of them. If you do this, be prepared with a vacuum on hand because this is quite the messy process. Foam dust everywhere. So once all the pillars are done, I need to figure out what the interior looks like and how you get from floor to floor. I'm thinking stairs. <laughs> but making circular stairs for a circular tower requires some math. And I went into marketing because I wanted to try and avoid math as much as possible. So I'm gonna trace out one of my floors on some foam core to act as a bit of a template. And then I'm gonna start mapping out roughly how much of a footprint I want my stairs to have. If my floors are 3.5 inches tall and I want my stairs to be 0.5 inches tall each, that means I need seven stairs. I want them to be large enough to fit minis on comfortably and there will be some weird curvature things happening so I want to make them roughly two inches wide to be safe. Now you've got to stare at your stairs for at least five minutes being confused by how circles work before moving on to the next step. So I gave up on that for a little bit and I decided that walls are where it's at for now. So I'm gonna grab my pile of foam core and try to replicate some of the techniques that I used in my foam core ruins video. Link in the top right if you missed that one. First, I have to peel all the paper off this industrial foam core and then I'm gonna mark out some long wall strips. A big mistake here, because I wasn't thinking about the thickness of the foam core adding to the footprint of the tower, so I cut my walls uh, exactly as long as I thought they should be, which ended up being slightly too short. So for a 10 inch tower, I cut out 34.5 inch long walls um, by three and a half inches tall. If you do this yourself, make sure you cut them to at least like 36 or 37 inches long because you'll want to have that excess to cut away at the end instead of the opposite, which is having a gap to fill. And uh, one of those is much easier than the other. Once you have all your walls cut out, you're gonna wanna draw on your brick pattern. I started out with a ballpoint pen and drew a really heavy cobblestone look. I realized after it took 40 minutes to finish the first of five walls that I needed to change up my strategy a bit. So I started drawing more of just a flat brick panel and I decided to use the cobblestone look for the ground floor. Make sure to have your bricks line up at the top and the sides. Do that four more times or bribe your friends and family to help you out. So because the foam core is very thin, it's going to need a little bit of help with the structural integrity. So I'm going to take my two inch foam and I'm going to cut out 20 one by one inch square pillars that are about four inches tall. I want four for each floor uh, to try and really like give this thing a, a frame almost. So I'm just gonna cut those pieces out. I start out by using my knife and then decide that I have the prox on so I'll put it to use instead. It's faster and I can guarantee like more of a straight cut. After taking that break, it's time to go back to the stairs. I'm gonna cut out my template and then trace it out five times onto some foam core. Then I'm going to take some wall sized pieces of foam core and pre-bend them to help line up with my steps. Using a pen, I'm just going to try and roughly mark out where the steps would land and then I'll measure out half inch sections for each stair and mark it out as the steps. I'll cut away the excess and then replicate that step exactly for the outside edge. Once those pieces are all set, unlike everything else with this build, do it three more times because you don't need steps on the top floor. Then I'm gonna texture all my pieces with a tin foil ball. This includes all of my stairs and walls. Once everything's ready, it's time to take all of our parts and start to make this actually look like something. I'm gonna use hot glue and start by assembling the stairs. For the first floor, I did this by gluing the outside edge 
to the base, but because my cuts aren't perfect, it was slightly crooked after I finished it. It's not a huge issue, but on the higher floors, I found that building the stairs first and then attaching them to the base made them less crooked at the cost of having them not line up perfectly with the walls. But I like that better, so I kept that process going. Before attaching the walls, I'm gonna grab my second floor and line up my stairs with it to see where they come through. And then I'll use a knife and cut out that section. Using plenty of hot glue, I will attach my wall strips to the base of each floor. This is why it was important to have your bases cut at a 90 degree angle. I'm using small sections of hot glue and holding it until it dries. If you try to do the whole thing in one shot, it's going to cool off way too fast and you're gonna get a really weak connection. So to fill that gap, I'm just gonna take one of my scrap foam pieces and cut a strip to fit exactly. And then I'll just glue it back into place with hot glue. Now I just replicate all of those steps on the second floor. I'm also gonna use scrap pieces of foam to fill all of the gaps on my stairs so that they have more of a solid stone look and you can't really see underneath them. Here's the test fit. This is actually starting to look like something. After looking at the test fit, I decided that I wanted to be able to see more of the steps from the floor below when the floors are stacked on top of each other. So I used my stair template to trace out a rough amount of space on the bottom of the second floor, and then I cut that out the same way as before. Here's how it looks. Okay, now we've got a formula for success, and it's time to just grind out the rest of the stories. Cue building montage. Here's what it looks like with all the floors. This is way bigger than I had imagined in my head. I have this habit of going way over the top, but I kind of like it. So I'm just gonna mark out with a little X where I want the front door to line up before I move on to the next step, which is taking my thick pillars and attaching them to the outside of this thing. These will act like brackets, helping ensure the floors line up straight, and it'll give the walls some extra support. I'm gonna space these out evenly around the pillar and make sure that I don't cover my door area. I'm really just eyeballing the space here. Before I glued them on, I decided I wanted to bevel the edges a bit. 
and then I textured them with some tin foil. Okay, time to glue them on. I'm just gonna absolutely cover one side in hot glue and then hold them in place until the connection is secure. So the pillars on the first floor are four inches because I want them to overlap by a half inch. But for all of the other floors, they only need to be three and a half inches. So I'm gonna cut that away on the other 16 pillars. The Bard's Craft kitchen knife is perfect for this step. I'll link to his video about it and my video reviewing it in the top right. Okay, now that's done, I'm gonna glue them to the second story. The same way as before, making sure they line up as flush as possible with the pillars from the first floor. Repeat that for the first four floors, and here's what that looks like. I want to add a balcony to the top floor, so I'm gonna set the rest aside for now and trace it out on a full sheet of foam core. Then I'm gonna draw out a two inch wide balcony around it and cut all of that out. Make sure to save that center circle because that's gonna work great as a base for our roof. I need to trim a bit off the inside of the balcony to get it to fit snugly over the top floor, but once you do, it fits really nicely. Now I'm just gonna fill that gap with hot glue, starting from the top side because I don't want this to get accidentally stuck to the floor below it. While that's drying, I'm gonna glue my last set of pillars here. Now I'm gonna separate my stories and fill the gap from the underside as well, making sure to avoid the areas where the pillars connect so that it can still sit flush. The roof fits perfectly between the pillars. That's so satisfying. Now I'm gonna take my pen and crudely draw wood grain onto my balcony, both the top and the bottom. I have some half inch pieces of foam core left over and these are gonna work perfectly for a little ledge on my balcony. I'm just gonna fit these onto my balcony and then glue them into place. Lesson learned from cutting out the walls, making it longer than it needs to be and then cutting it to fit. Now I'm going back with the pen and cleaning up the wood grain a bit on my balcony, also adding it to the ledge. I felt like the pillars were taking up too much walking space on the balcony, so I marked out some angles on them and then cut them into rough arches and re-beveled my edges. I wanted to add some more arches to the balcony, so I took my foam core back out and started drawing eight more squares to fit. After cutting out, I test fit one on the balcony and sketched out the areas that I wanted to cut away. I wanted to keep my tower generic enough that I could get many uses out of it, so these archways aren't incredibly ornate. I used that version as a template for all of the others, and after cutting them all out, I textured them with tin foil. I glued them all in place around the tower, attaching four of them to my pillars, and I let the other four fill the gaps in between. This balcony is surprisingly sturdy for just thin foam. It's more than uh, good enough to hold all the medium-sized plastic minis I could want. Uh, if you find yourself using a lot of metal minis, you might want to make this a little thicker, possibly sandwiching a piece of MDF between two wood-grained pieces of foam core, uh, but I tend to want my stuff to be as thin as possible if I can get away with it, which I can in this situation. Now with all of my stories lined up, I'm going to take my knife and make sure that all of my pillars line up nicely, and try to make it less obvious that the layers of this tower come apart. I'm also adding various nicks and dents to the pillars to break up the surface a bit. So that's all the structural elements for the tower completed. It ended up being quite a bit more work than I thought it was going to be, especially drawing all of the brick walls. But that work's gonna pay off later. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you're having a hard time waiting for the build to be complete, I have plenty of other terrain making videos that you can check out in the meantime. I'll see you guys next week for the details. Have a great week. So now you repeat that for the first floor, four floors. So repeat that for the first floor, four floors, first floor floors, first four floors, first floor, four floors, first four floors, first four floors. Okay.